Sol Bellow said, people can lose their lives in libraries, and he was right. They should really be warned. This brings around a real serious question that I wanted to ask today, and I really need to get your help with this. If exposure to knowledge was enough to be successful, well, surely librarians would already rule the world. And this led me to a question I wanted to ask today. Is a lack of knowledge the reason that people are actually unsuccessful, or is it a lack of action that they have took over time? Now, probably a little bit of context would actually help here. Go back to when I was at school. I wasn't the best student. I never really saw the real benefits of a lot of the things I did. For example, I had to write a letter to the Queen once, and she just still never wrote back to this day. So I just wasn't really that engaged. But here's a big thing. My science teachers used to seem to take great pleasure in sending me home with these below-grade reports. And it was never fun handing it over to my parents. But at the same time, I was never really someone who'd really committed. I'd never really tried. I'd never really gone all at it. But this is the big problem that we've got. Suddenly, I'm 15 years old. I'm only allowed in school one day a week. And they say to me, you can go and work on a YTS scheme for the others. Now, back then, being a chef was pretty cool. And I got inspired by the naked chef. And for anyone who's too young to know who that is, don't worry, it's not a guy just in an apron and a bare butt. It was actually Jamie Oliver's brand. So first off, I'm immersed in work and I love it. I've got passion, I've got drive, I've got determination. And any time that we're passionate with things, it doesn't feel like effort. And I progressed. Soon I'm quite young and I'm running my own restaurant. But then bang. Overnight, my passion disappeared. My drive dropped. Suddenly, I felt trapped. Suddenly, I felt like I was in a place I couldn't get out of and I didn't want to be there, but I haven't studied well at school, so now I'm in an awkward position. Now, I've got really a choice. Go and work in the local supermarket, which I didn't really want to do, or someone said to me, go into sales. So sales it was. Now, this is the good bit. First day, broke all single records. Second day, people have got me on their shoulders and they're carrying me out, chanting my name. <laughs> That did not happen. I literally was terrible. Like, I sucked. I couldn't close a door, let alone a deal. This was a big shock to the system. After a bit of convincing, someone that worked there took me under their wing and gave me a bit of guidance, gave me a bit of hope. They inspired me to take action. I part started picking up the books, started listening to the tapes, and I started to really learn. I become immersed. And again, now I'm immersed, now I'm taking action. This is the point when this first phrase ever really came about of, if knowledge was actually enough to be successful, well, why don't the librarians already rule the world? I used to imagine all these, those big, beautiful libraries with all the books from all the ages, with the wisest, smartest, most successful people filling the shelves, and the librarians been looking after them for their whole life. And what's it brought them? Did they get all their goals? Did they get their dreams? They've been exposed to all of the knowledge I could possibly need. Then I got thinking about my teachers. They were experts in their field, and did they do what they want? Were they living the life of their dreams? Were they getting the best out of it? Or were they just here looking after some pretty ungrateful, testosterone-filled, spotty teenagers? Then I met this guy. Now, this guy, by his own admission, was not the smartest cookie in the jar. But he was full of passion full of enthusiasm, really just, it, it just drew people in. But he used to use words that didn't even make sense. Now, hang on a minute. I've always been told that knowledge trumps all. And here's this guy saying stuff that doesn't even make sense and drawing people in, and drawing people in that were far smarter than he was. So the knowledge wasn't the big thing here. I want you to imagine something. Imagine I've got a button now that I can press, and it can give you all of the knowledge on any subject you want. Maybe you're going to choose art, maybe you'll choose science, maybe you'll play the piano. What about this? What about there's another button on there? And this would give you unwavering levels of confidence, unwavering levels of self-confidence, belief, persistence, determination. What would you choose? Because if knowledge was the whole point behind this, if exposure to knowledge was what we needed to become successful, the librarians would already have took over. I don't think that knowledge is necessarily the problem. Think about the phones that we're watching this on right now. 
They're as powerful as most of the computers that help take people on a NASA space mission from Earth up into space and come back safely. We're here swiping left, swiping right, and playing Candy Crush. We've got Google on our phones. We've got the exposure to all the information. So why are we not achieving all the goals? Why are we not achieving all the things that we wanted? I think the problem is a lot of the information that comes through to us, it's coming through on almost a wonky antenna. The information's coming in, but it's just not resonating with us in the right way. And then we don't take the action that's needed to make sure it actually works. If we think about any of the greatest stories ever told, they are normally filled with downsides, peril, danger, objection, hurdles, lost. And the very thing that stops one person pushes another person on, strives them to success. That's the catalyst that helps them. And when we talk about a lot of this stuff out there, we talk about failure. I personally don't think that failure is at the opposite end to success. I think they're on the same path, and you've got to go through a degree of failure to get to the success. But here's the problem. A lot of us, as soon as we get our failure, we stop. We give up. But we know, deep down, we didn't walk on the first attempt. We didn't talk on the first attempt. But now, as adults, we're deciding we should only try it once or twice or maybe three times. I think the big problem we've got is we need more faith in ourselves, more commitment in ourselves, more continual execution on the very things that we know to get to the stage of becoming good or even great. To be vulnerable for a minute, at my darkest point, I was laying on the garage floor with empty bottles of pills, and I wanted it to be over, and I did. I had the knowledge to know that that wasn't the right path for me. I had the knowledge to know this wasn't good. The lack of knowledge wasn't the issue. I had more than enough knowledge. The majority of the time, the way I was processing that information, the steps I was taking with my actions was not congruent with the right knowledge, and that ended up being the problem. In too many instances, we get exposure to knowledge and then we tick it off the list. We take it as I know that, but we don't action it. And I think this is the big problem that we've got. We need to become unconsciously competent in so many areas. And a lot of us are just aware of a situation. We're aware of a knowledge. That's not enough to implement it to a level that it works. Imagine driving your car. Yep, here's a book on it. Off you go. I think we'd have a few crashes. Imagine getting exposure to the handbook on how to fly a helicopter and off you go. Up you go. I wouldn't fancy getting in that, would you? But we're doing it with our lives, with our knowledge and with our execution. Think of it like this. You're not sat there now thinking about breathing, right? <laughs> well, you are now. I've just said about it. But in so many other areas of our life, everything that we do now had to be learned from walking and talking, playing the piano, riding the bike, all of these things had to be learned, and we fell, and we fall, and we continue to fall until we get to a stage of being better. A lot of the stuff we're not unconsciously competent with, so it won't work. I want you to do one quick thing before I go. I want to play a game with you. It's really simple. All I want you to do is finish the sequence. A, B, C, D, E, F. There you go. You've got it. Now, remember back at school when you got bored of them keep repeating that same thing? We knew it. We didn't need to keep knowing it, but they wanted us to become what? unconsciously competent in our area. Now we don't need to remember the alphabet, it's just there, and we need to do that with more things in our lives. I think, and I'll leave you with this thought, the majority of things that we want in our life, we already have the tools in our shed that we need to get to the next level. What we've lacked is the execution, the belief, the practical steps that are going to need to get to that next level, and we're too often we're passing over the very tools we need in hunt for, in search for, the better tool, the better version, the thing that's going to magically fix everything. I don't think that's what we should do. I think we need to go back to the shed, we need to go back to our toolbox. We need to look at the things that we know and we need to become unconsciously competent and work out why we need those skills and who the very best of those people are at that level. And if they've done it, so can we. I don't think the fact that the new knowledge is always the key. I think we're the key, and we need to unlock it with those tools that we have.